All right, everybody. So now we're going to look at ATP. What is ATP? What do we use it for? So ATP is um, a nucleotide that your body uses as energy or it uses for energy, right? So as we talked about before, energy is something that is transferred. It is nothing you can create. You cannot create energy, but you can transfer energy from one object to another or from one form to another. For example, if I wanted to heat myself up because uh, it's really cold out uh, and I have an electric heater, I can plug my electric heater into the wall, take the electrical energy from my house and convert it into heat using that machine, right? So I just transferred or changed my energy from one form to another, from electrical to heat. Um, same idea goes on in your body with ATP. So ATP is um, the energy that your body is going to use. If you were a laptop, you would use electricity. You're not. You're a person. So we need to use a chemical energy, specifically ATP. Where do you get it from? Your food. So there is energy stored chemically in the bonds of your food, which we'll talk about in more detail in a minute. So we're going to take that energy and transfer it from the food into ATP so that we can use it right? So how do we do that? That's going to be what these next few videos are going to talk about. All right. So specifically, um, how are we going to create ATP? So this is going to be an oxidation reaction uh, where we're going to oxidize glucose um, into fuel. So as you can see from this reaction here, this is the standard cellular respiration um, reaction where we take glucose and we add six oxygen molecules through biochemistry. We're going to create six CO2 molecules, six carbon dioxide, as well as six waters. And then of course our goal, which is energy as well as some heat, right? Um, and this is going to be an exergonic reaction. All right. So this is going to create um, more energy as well as release heat uh, from the body. Um, this is very important for the body, right? Without ATP, we cannot function. And that is really important to understand. That said, I want you to think of it in terms of these springs here. So ATP is when you have energy ready to go. Think of ATP kind of like this spring here at the bottom, right? It's wound up and it's loaded up with energy. It has a ton of potential energy, meaning that at any time you can use it and release the spring and release the energy that goes with it. So if I put a ball on the top of this spring right here and I release the spring, it would shoot the ball up in the air. It transfers energy from the spring into the ball and flip it up in the air. Once it does that, we're going to have ADP. Right. So ADP is adenosine diphosphate, meaning that we just released one of our phosphate molecules. When you break that bond, you're going to release energy. And I will demonstrate that with my amazing image that I have here. So ATP is adenosine, the A over here, and triphosphate, meaning we have three phosphates. So when you create ATP, this molecule here is loaded up just like that spring. Now, what you can do with this molecule is you can actually break it apart when you need it for energy. When you do that, think of it kind of like removing this last phosphate. So it fires off, releasing, I know this is an ugly image, energy. Right. And that's the idea with releasing energy from ATP. OK, so when you have ATP, you can release the phosphate and then use this energy to function. If you want to do the opposite, the anabolic reaction, you will have to do a process called cellular respiration, which we're going to get to. In that process, you're going to do the opposite. You're going to take this phosphate and you are going to force it back on to the to the molecule. 
So in this case, you're going to take it and you're going to force it back into place. And this is not the best looking image, but that's the idea. I can make it look a little prettier, but that's the idea here. So we're going to take it using energy. So we need to use energy, hence the reason we're taking energy from our food. And we're going to take the energy from our food and we're going to grab a phosphate and we're going to force it back on, doesn't look pretty, back on and create ATP. From there, we can use it again, which makes ADP. And we keep going back and forth. And that's uh, seen in this image here, where it's literally just attaching and detaching phosphates. Right? And that is the cycle of how ATP is formed. Think of it kind of like taking a bottle, um, not a bottle, taking a, uh, a marker cap, putting it on. Now you have ATP. Popping it off. ADP. That's the idea. It's just popping it back on and back off. All right. And the two ways you can remember it, it's like a spring, right? So if you have the spring, you're forcing that phosphate onto the spring. So it has a bunch of potential energy. And when you use it, you can release the spring. The phosphate fires off. Another example, um, think of it like children on a school bus, right? So if you watch that crash course video, it does a great job of talking about that. Think of it like you have three children on a school bus. Uh, and they all just really don't want to be next to each other. And they're all sitting in the seat together. If you put three kids on there, they don't like each other. They're going to force one of those kids off the edge, right? So there's a lot of energy built up between those three kids. And they just want to be used. And the first chance they get, they're going to shove that kid right off the edge of the seat, creating a DP. And then from there, you can put it back on and keep going back and forth. So that is ATP uh, regeneration, um, How to, what it's used for, what it is. How do we make it? How do we break it down? So on and so forth. If you have any questions, just let me know.